Thank you, Brent. And Brent is also part of our EMC operations here at Jackson EMC. Now, if you would remain standing for our invocation, and that will be led by Pastor Josh Smith of Prince Avenue Baptist Church. Thank you. Let's pray together. Our Father, what a joy it is to be here tonight. We are so thankful for a beautiful evening. We're thankful for this food and for the ability to enjoy it with friends and family in an atmosphere like this. We thank you for the way in which our hearts have already been encouraged and blessed by the music that we've heard. And God, we are grateful for this wonderful nation of ours. We thank you for the way in which you have blessed us over so many years, and we pray your continued blessing and grace upon our nation. And Father, we thank you for Jackson EMC, and we uh, pray that in the same way that they've blessed us tonight, that you would continue to bless them, that you would give them wisdom and grace and encouragement, that everything they need to know and every decision they need to make would be done according uh, to your will and your plan. But Father, most of all tonight, above all things, we're thankful for Jesus Christ. We thank you that you loved us enough to send your only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I pray that everyone in this room would know the joy and the hope and the peace of Jesus Christ, that everyone would have a relationship with Jesus by calling upon his name, and that your very presence would be here tonight ministering to us. And we pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Josh. We appreciate that. As you're getting re-seated and get acclimated, you can turn your attention to the stage or to the video screens as we get reacquainted with our Jackson EMC board. Representing Gwinnett County is Otis P. Jones. He's our chairman, along with Lynn Price, secretary and treasurer. Representing those of you in Madison and Oglethorpe counties, Rodney Chandler, who is the vice chairman. Representing Hall and Lumpkin counties, Steve Blair. Representing Jackson County, Sarah McKinney and Shade Story. Representing Banks and Franklin counties, John Mitchell. Representing Barrow County, Chuck Steele. And representing Clark County, Alton Thornton. And the cooperative's attorney is Mike McCleary from Fortson, Bentley, and Griffin. Let's give a warm welcome to our chairman, Mr. Otis Jones. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's certainly good to see you here today. And I now call the order to order the 83rd annual meeting of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation. If there are no objections, I appoint Mr. Steve Miner of Ty Single Vance to conduct our business session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this meeting. EMC annual meetings are a new, uh, kind of a unique thing. There are not many businesses where the consumers meet and do the business of their company. Uh, as Jackson EMC members, you not only take service, electric service from Jackson EMC, but you have the right to elect your board of directors. And your board of directors, um, not only do they take electric service on the same terms and conditions as you do, but they live here in your community. And that's a unique um, aspect of electric cooperatives that you don't find in any other type of electric utility. There are a few formal matters we need to take care of prior to hearing the reports of the president and the chairman and conducting the election of directors. And last but not least, getting to the, uh, the prize, uh, prize drawings. Excuse me. First, I'd like to appoint Jim Roberts to serve as our parliamentarian. Jim is over there, and he has Robert's Rules of Order. And he will uh, be in charge of any parliamentary questions. You were given an agenda when you came to the meeting. It looked like this. If there's no objection, we will adopt that agenda for the business of the day. Any objections? Hearing no, none, the uh, agenda is adopted. Next, I would like the record to reflect that I uh, have received certification from Ms. Lynn Price, the EMC's corporate secretary, that official notice of this meeting was contained in the August issue of Jimco News, 
which was mailed to all of the corporation's members, 200, 204,397 members of record on August 22nd. We also have proof of mailing that has been certified by the U.S. Postal Service. Also, Article 2, Section 4 of your bylaws requires that we have at least 150 members registered in order to conduct this meeting. I would like the record to reflect that we have registered 657 members and we do have a quorum. We have in attendance over 1,338 uh, total people and we appreciate all of you for coming and joining us today. The last formality we need to take care of is action on the minutes from last year's annual meeting. The minutes are actually an actual transcript of the meeting and are on file at the cooperative's office where they may be reviewed by you at any time during business hours. So a motion would be in order to approve the transcript as the minutes of the prior meeting. Do I have such a motion? We have a motion. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor of adopting the transcript as the minutes of the meeting, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no? The ayes have it, and the minutes have been approved. I'll now, now ask Mr. Terry McMichael, your independent auditor, to come to the podium to deliver the auditor's report. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present the financial report of your cooperative. Uh, the September 2022 issue of Jimco News contained the financial statements of your cooperative. I will provide you a brief summary of those now. Your cooperative has assets totaling approximately $1.3 billion for reporting year 2022. The majority of these assets are comprised of utility plant. Utility plant is the poles, wire, transformers, and other equipment used to distribute reliable electricity to your homes, businesses, and organizations. Your utility plant increased by approximately $31.5 million during the year. This increase is the result of providing service to Newton members, as well as improvements to the system to assure continued reliable service to you, the members. Your equity increased by approximately $11 million, which is the resulting difference between revenue and expenses for the reporting year, less margin refunds of $15 million returned to you, the members. Your balance sheet and the result of operations for the current year maintain compliance with the requirements of your lenders. In conclusion, you maintain a financial health as a member-owned electric cooperative. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present you the 2022 financial report. Well, good evening again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our 83rd annual meeting of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation. It's truly an honor to see you tonight and to fellowship with many of you. Jackson EMC was founded in 1938 on the belief that by working together we could improve the quality of life for the residents of Northeast Georgia. As we look across our service area and look back on our accomplishments, it's evident that your cooperative is strong because of the power of people. People who are innovative, people who care about their community, people who are excited about possibilities for their cooperative. We are honored to join you joined us here tonight. Indeed, it's people like you who help keep Jackson EMC's foundation as a cooperative strong. We know that our community is a place where people and their families and businesses growing. In fact, our service area now includes some of the fastest growing counties in the USA. According to the Census Bureau, Jackson County is now the 10th fastest growing county in the nation. Our distribution network continues to expand to serve our growing community. When we energized our first lines in 1939, we had 690 miles of wire. 
Today, our network stretches more than 14,700 miles across 10 counties in Northeast Georgia. That growth has added 6,412 meters to our distribution system over the past 12 months, bringing the total meters we serve today to more than 250,000. Over the past five years, the number of meters we serve has grown by 10%. Based on meters served, we're the third largest electric cooperative in the nation. In the past year, Jackson EMC members used over 5.4 billion, that's billion with a B, kilowatt hours of electricity. That's the equivalent of a refrigerator running for 1.2 million years. While we are adding new residential members, our commercial and industrial load is growing also. This year, we welcomed over 500 new commercial and industrial members who add 60.5 million kilowatt hours of load to our distribution system. These commercial and industrial members help keep the wholesale cost of power down. These new members represent a variety of industries including Makita USA, a worldwide manufacturer of industrial power tools and power equipment. Makita USA is building a 600,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility in Flowery Branch for distribution, training, and customer service. In Banks County, Pack Light is building a facility that's over 200,000 square feet for manufacturing, a warehouse, recycling, and office space. Pack Light is a leading producer of specialty forms, flooring, and fabric for several industries. Additionally, Publix Supermarket has selected Jackson EMC as its service provider for its newest grocery stores in Winder, Jefferson, and Athens. This growth continues to require expansion and improvement of our distribution network. In the past 12 months, your cooperative has invested over $47 million in the distribution network that serves you. That investment included the installation of 27 more automated switches this year. These switches help us keep the lights or get the lights back on faster when an outage occurs. Right now, we have 390 of these installed, and we are working toward installing more than 500 across our distribution system. Over the next three years, we plan to invest $173 million in our distribution system to upgrade lines and equipment to improve reliability and serve our growing membership. This infrastructure is needed as we expect to add more than 14,200 new meters to Jackson EMC by the year 2026. We are focused on providing you with reliable service and on securing the electricity we need from a variety of sources, including renewable sources. During the past 12 months, Jackson EMC members received 93 million kilowatt hours of renewable electricity through our partnership with Green Power EMC. Just over half of this was generated by solar power, which was enough to totally power more than 3,200 of your homes for a 12-month period of time. We continue to invest in large-scale solar projects that benefit our members. Through several new projects under construction in Middle and South Georgia, we'll add more solar power in the coming years. In 2023, we anticipate receiving 77 million kilowatt hours of solar power. Reliable power is only one consideration. We also want you to have affordable electricity. As board members, sitting behind me here, it's our responsibility to make sure your cooperative is efficiently run. And one measure of efficiency is what you, the member, pay for your electricity. Jackson EMC members 
pay about 12% less than the average utility in the state of Georgia. That's an average savings of around $210 per year. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. One of the key benefits of being a member of an electric cooperative is margin refunds. You're an owner of a not-for-profit cooperative. At the end of the year, you're eligible to receive a portion of the funds that are left over after all of our co-op's expenses are paid. That money is called margin refunds, and your board is proud to be able to return it to you. This year, this December, your board of directors is pleased to announce that we'll return $15 million to members who received service in 1994, 1995, 1996, and or 2021. When, when that refund is mailed this December, Jackson EMC will have returned $189 million to our members since we were founded in 1938. Along with the other members of your cooperative board of directors sitting behind me here, I want to tell you we are honored, we are honored to play a role in providing the reasonably priced, high quality electric service we know you all depend on. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for coming tonight. That concludes my report. Thank you. And now, if you will, please help me welcome the Jackson EMC President and CEO, Mr. Chip Jenkins. Chip. Thank you, Otis. And thank you all for being here tonight. It is a great crowd. We've had some great weather and great music and entertainment and chicken, just about everything else you can ask for. And the, uh, the nice thing about my talk tonight is I'm the uh, last official speaker before the music and entertainment comes back. So y'all bear with me for a minute. Yes, that's worth applying for. So um, thank you again for being here tonight, for taking part in the business of your co-op. You just heard from Otis how the co-op's doing. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the exciting ways that we're serving you and what's ahead for your cooperative. You know, we're in some turbulent times around the world where we're seeing record high prices for natural gas, where we're having difficulties in the economy and supply chain causes us problems in getting the materials that we need. But I don't, I don't want you to worry about those sort of things. I want you to know that here at the co-op that we're always mindful that we're a not-for-profit that we are member owned by, by everyone that's here tonight and that we put our members' needs first. And when we do that and we approach our business that way, we can always uh, be reassured that we're gonna keep your costs low and your service high because that's our goal. And we're here to provide you, as, as you already know, with safe and reliable and affordable electricity. And, and we do that through great service. We do that through a very efficient planning process. We're always forecasting and looking ahead to what your needs are so that we can be prepared. And, and I also want you to know that when we ask our members how we're doing, we're happy to hear that they are happier than ever with the service that we are providing. And, and how do we know that? So the mid-year report by J.D. Power, a very well-respected survey company that measures customer satisfaction, shared with us that Jackson EMC at the mid-year point was ranked as the number one utility in the nation in customer satisfaction. The number one. And our mission here, as always, is to exceed our members' expectations. And I love it when it shows up like that. But that doesn't mean that we're going to rest on our laurels or that we're going to relax because we're always looking for ways to get better. For example, since we met last year, we've launched some really great programs and made some exciting leaps forward. One of those programs is Jackson EMC's Cooperative Solar Program. It was launched this summer as a way to have members take advantage of solar energy without the hassle, without the expense of having to install solar panels on their roof. So with all of those benefits and, and none of the frustration, the response from members to this innovative program has been really strong. 
Many members have already reached out to us um, to asking us about Cooperative Solar. And within just a, a few months of launch, we've already got 460 members enrolled in that program. So it's off to a great start. And many more are talking to us about uh, how to learn about Cooperative Solar. And we want to be your trusted energy provider when it comes to renewable resources for your home, for your business. So if you're interested in Cooperative Solar, we encourage you to reach out to us, please. Another addition to our service offerings is our prepay program. Members on prepay pay for their electricity in advance before they use it. And for those members, prepay offers a great option for those that want to avoid a traditional monthly bill and pay on their own time, their own schedule, their own budget. It's a great alternative to traditional billing. And that's another program that if you're interested in prepay, we'd love to hear from you, ask you to reach out to us on that as well. Now, when it, when it comes to using energy, we're always evaluating where to make improvements in our distribution network. And that includes our substations, which are the backbone of our network. By upgrading our existing substations and building new ones where we need them, we improve the reliability for everyone across the system. And we recently completed construction of a new substation serving the growing North Hall area. And in Gwinnett, we upgraded a substation there that serves many businesses and residents in the Norcross area. Altogether, we have 81 substations across our system providing reliable electric service to our members. And next year, we'll be building, we'll be building three more, including one here in Jackson County near the Dry Pond exit. Those substations are an important part of delivering electricity to our community. And we all depend on that electricity to power our lives, our businesses, from the lights in our living rooms to our air conditioners in the summer and on strange hot days like this in September. During an exceptionally hot day this past summer, we surpassed the previous record for electricity sales to our members in a single hour. At the peak of the summer heat on June 15th, and you may remember this day, it was awfully hot, our electrical demand was 1.3 million kilowatt hours to set a new record. And I'm proud to say that our system performed well because of all the investments we've made to build a robust system to serve you over these years. Now, Otis mentioned this. Yeah, there were, there were no brownouts here like some other states have seen, so um, keep that in mind. Now, just last month, we reached a significant milestone, and Otis mentioned this, and that's serving more than 250,000 meters. That's impressive. And, and consider this, there are more than 900 electric cooperatives in the United States. And when we passed that mark, that made Jackson EMC the third largest electric co-op with those 250,000 meters. And reaching that milestone again as well with no, no problems on our distribution system shows that we've been prepared for bringing in new businesses, bringing in new neighbors, while providing exceptional service as your cooperative. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the Jackson EMC Foundation for just a minute. You know that at the heart of our cooperative is serving this community. And you take part in that through your participation in Operation Roundup, which rolls up your bill to the next dollar. And the Jackson EMC Foundation has a huge impact in our community that we live in because those dollars come right back to our community. And the Foundation Board of Directors makes sure that those monies go to worthy organizations to, to, that make a positive impact in our area. Over the, over the past 12 months, those contributions from members through your generosity have added up to more than $1.3 million coming back to our community. And to date, the Foundation has donated $18 million to the most vulnerable members of our community by providing funding for community-based programs like food banks, community health clinics, educational initiatives, emergency shelters, and much more. You can be really assured that the money is going to great places and that the money is doing what you would expect it to do and feel really good about those contributions. That impact is made possible by you, by your generosity, by your donations through Operation Roundup, and we thank you for that. Now, now, we know that all of these amazing accomplishments take people power, the people here to do what's going on at Operation Roundup and, and other places. But our employees have also been doing a phenomenal job keeping members first. And I want to pause here for a minute and thank all the employees that made this meeting possible, whether they were parking cars, 
whether they were serving chicken or drinks. Let's thank the employees who made this happen tonight. We've got some of the best employees there are anywhere, I can promise you that. And our board of directors has also been an enthusiastic supporter of the, assist of, the, of the services and initiatives that we're bringing out and have led your cooperative to this success. So let me wrap up with this, uh, speaking of significant contributions, because this is an important, an important one. And on behalf of myself and the board of directors, I want to take just a minute to recognize a man who has left a lasting legacy at Jackson EMC. Uh, his fingerprints are on each and every one of the successes that Jackson EMC has seen over the years. And that man is Bill Carpenter. For more than five decades, Bill has served the cooperative as a member of the board of directors and as an employee before that. He worked at Jackson EMC for eight years as the editor of Jimco News, manager of member services, and even served as the acting general manager. Bill has worked over his time at the cooperative with all five of the CEOs that have ever run this organization. Bill's impact has shaped the cooperative into what it is today. And this summer, Bill retired from the cooperative board, and Sarah McKinney has been appointed to fill his unexpired term. We're excited about that. But Bill played a unique role and has a perspective unlike anyone else. And Bill was kind enough to help us create a video about his history here and what it meant to him. And I'd like to dedicate the rest of my time tonight to hearing what Bill has to say from Bill in his own words about his time serving the members of Jackson EMC. So let's play that video that Bill helped us with. Bill Carpenter retired in 2022 after many years of dedicated service to Jackson EMC. How have things changed at Jackson Electric? It was small. Interstate 85 was under construction, but it was 1965 when it opened up. Lake Lanier was filling up, but it, it was not full of water. I would say that we had, when I came there, about 12,000 members, I guess and we didn't have a single bucket truck. We have more members. We have all over 240,000 members. That's big. Our employees stay in longer because they like it. You've got a good environment. They're being treated right. We, we have shorter out outage time then, and we have fewer outages. When I went to Jackson Electric, we served people all over the place, and here's what people do. When you get a postcard, this really happened. And they'd say, my power's out. You know, they mailed it to Jackson EMC. My power's out. If you could, come help me get my power back on. Now that's how it's changed. Jackson EMC is knee deep in technology. We have more underground than we do on, on the poles. I never believed that would happen. It's amazing. We have better equipment. Did you know they dug holes by hand? They set poles by hand. But can you imagine? All they had was the old uh, trucks with A-frame on the back of them. So we, we've got better equipment. We have larger offices, better offices, more accessible offices, and our facilities have been improved. There's so many ways you can communicate with that. Like, so I'm an old school, and so if I have something to transact, I won't talk to them, I won't look at them, but if you want to talk to somebody, you can talk to somebody. You want to go to the website, hey, we can do it. Also, we're more involved in the community. We have uh, the foundation, Jackson EMC Foundation, people helping people, people working together. Uh, we have uh, EMC security, making our homes and businesses more secure. Our employees have more opportunity for training and for advancement. It's, a, it's a really a great thing. This is funny. My first day at Jackson Electric, I did not have to go to work because it was Labor Day. But the next day I was there and I found out immediately, annual meeting is gonna be less than a month. And it sounded really great to me. I mean, we're gonna put up a big tent down at the old headquarters. And in those days, we cooked the chicken. It was just like homecoming. It was fantastic. It's so wonderful to see people. And that's what annual meeting is really fun time for the members. I mean, they've been out there working, paying their bills, and we, we bring them in and we show them how we appreciate them. 
it's just uh, an amazing thing that you see the culmination of uh, the whole year, like at harvest time, you know, when you laid, laid the crop by and everybody enjoyed it. And so annual meeting is a proof of the fact that uh, we're owned by those we serve. Jackson MC means ownership, and that, I like that. There's something about ownership that changes your whole outlook of life. I mean, if it's your house, you, you, you take care of it. If it's your land, you take care of it. Margin refunds. Last year, uh, $14 million. That's not chump change. That is big, big stuff. It's proof of ownership. $174 million since we've been in business at Jackson. We're not giving lip service to ownership. We're showing the people that they own Jackson Electric. We're accessible. You talk to somebody as your neighbor, your friend, you probably may know them. Or they know somebody that you know. And you're at you're a friendly place when you're at Jackson Electric. Your, your board members are your friends and neighbors. So you talk to real people. What has been my most rewarding experience? Now that's a difficult question right there because it's been a long time, 60 years. Nobody's done that. I never intended to. I never said, I'm going to try to break the record here. I never thought of that. I was having such a good time and I enjoyed myself so much that first thing I know, you know, I turned around and 60 years have gone by. You know, if you enjoy what you're doing and you're working for real good people, you're blessed. It was really rewarding to be an employee at Jackson Electric. From everyone at Jackson EMC, thank you for your service, Bill. Enjoy your retirement. Yeah, that, that is a much deserved round of applause for Bill Carpenter there. A very, very special tribute uh, in his own words, um, and he will be dearly, dearly missed. I want to thank you for being here again tonight and playing an active role in your cooperative. Please stick around and enjoy the entertainment. And remember, that grand prize drawing is just around the corner, so don't miss that either. Thank you for being here. We love you. Thank you very much. Wow, what a remarkable record of achievement you have here at Jackson EMC. Um, for a co-op that seeks to provide safe, reliable, and affordable electric energy, they certainly do that and do that incredibly well. Um, to come in at 12% lower rates than Georgia Power, uh, to invest the kind of millions of dollars back into the community, and um, to be number one in customer satisfaction. That's a lot to be proud of. It's now time on the agenda for the election of directors. The bylaws provide for two ways for candidates for the board of directors to be nominated. One way is by nomination through the nominating committee. The other way is by a written petition signed by at least 50 members under bylaw section, uh, Article 3, Section 4. I will now call, call on Mr. David Sharpton to report on the nomination by the nominating committee. Mr. Sharpton. Thank you, Steve. I learned a long time ago that if you are asked to speak by the inch and you speak by the yard, you're shown the door by the foot. So, Mr. Chairman, I won't take much of your time this evening. The nominating committee of the Jackson Electric Membership Corporation met at the corporate headquarters office, 850 Commerce Road, Jefferson, Georgia, at 9 a.m. February the 9th, 2022. In accordance with the bylaws of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation, we wish to place in nomination the following members for consideration by the membership at the meeting of the, set of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation to be held on Thursday, September the 22nd, 2022, and voted on at said meeting to serve for a three-year term beginning on that date. Representing Gwinnett County, Otis P. Jones. Barrow County, Charles Steele. Hall, Lumpkin County, Steve Blair. And may I add that all members on the nominating committee 
consented 100 percent, and they've all signed their approval on this piece of paper. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharpton. I will also report that this year there were no nominations made by petition. So bylaw Article 2, Section 5.2 provides that if there is only one candidate for a seat on the Board of Directors, the election shall be conducted by a voice vote at this meeting. So it's now in order that we have a motion to elect Mr. Jones, Steele, and Blair by voice vote. Do I have such a motion? We have a motion. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second. The motion to elect uh, Mr. Jones, Steele, and Blair has been made and seconded. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no? The ayes have it. And I would like the record to reflect that each of the nominees have been elected for a three-year term as director. The next item on the agenda is unfinished business but we have no unfinished business from last year's meeting. So I'll now open the floor and ask if anybody has any new business to bring before the meeting today. Any new business? Hearing no new business, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Do I have a motion to adjourn? We have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor of adjourning the meeting, moving on. Yeah, don't leave because we've got the prize drawings. But a motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no? The ayes have it. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Good luck on the prize drawings. And please drive safely when you go home. And thanks again for your support of the cooperative.